The Asus Rampage 3 gene uses an American Megatrends BIOS. Uh, obviously this is a Republic of Gamers motherboard, so the BIOS is very, very tweaked out, very uh, flexible, a lot of features. So starting, your first screen you're presented with is your Extreme Tweaker screen. Uh, this is going to be your setup for tweaking your CPU and various voltages. Going down, uh, you can see that it starts out with your target CPU and DRAM frequency, which is actually a great place to start because as you're tweaking, you can actually see exactly where you're at. First up, tuning mode. Gives you a choice of extreme overclock or gaming. Uh, obviously, extreme overclock is going to be made for extremely overclocking the CPU, whereas gaming is going to give you a little bit better graphics performance and a little bit more geared up for that. CPU level up. Auto tuning. Uh, you can have it on auto, which is going to default uh, no overclock. In this case, using the i7-965, it gives you a choice of bringing it up to 3.6 GHz or 4 GHz at the touch of a button. Uh, we did find uh, the 4 GHz on this particular chip. We did have to make a couple of tweaks to get it stable at 4 GHz, but it was a great place to start. It really set everything up nicely. The tweaks were just minor voltage tweaks to keep it stable. Moving down, you've got Sync Mode. Sync Mode is for ROG Connect or OC Station. Um, ROG Connect allowing you to connect into your BIOS and computer and change your setup while the computer is booted from a remote computer. You've got your Overclock Tuner. Manual, Auto, XMP, CPU Level Up, or ROG Memory Profile. This is going to change your memory profile to your liking. You can set it manually let it default to the auto settings of your DRAM, XMP settings, the settings set by a CPU level up if you are going to use a CPU level up or an ROG memory profile. Moving down, CPU ratio setting, multiplier, turbo power limit, CPU configuration, we're going to get into that a little bit later, that actually accesses the CPU configuration in the advanced screen. DRAM frequency, auto, or allowing you to select your multiplier. U-clock frequency, auto, or once again allowing you to select. QPI link data rate, auto, slow, or selectable. Memory recheck, memory configuration protect, uh, enabled, completely kills anything in the DRAM timing menu. This allows you to set whatever you want as far as your DRAM timing. Load line calibration. Keep your V-droop where you like it. Differential amplitude. Overclock protection for the IOH DRAM QPI. Extreme overvoltage. Enabled or disabled. <clears throat> CPU voltage control. Absolute VID or you can skew it. CPU voltage can be set to auto or you can key in whatever voltage you like. Same with the PLL voltage, QPI DRAM core voltage, your IOH voltage, PCI Express voltage, ICH voltage, ICH PCI Express voltage, DRAM bus voltage, DRAM reference voltages are listed. CPI spread spectrum and PCI Express sped, spread spectrum on and off. CPI clock skew, IOH clock skew, and that'll bring us back up. Nice thing, uh, DRAM bus voltage. For example, this particular DRAM actually runs at 1.65 volts, so we'll just set it right there. Gives you a warning, may damage CPU, etc., but we know this is the correct voltage. Going back up, in the main, system time, system date, language, your SATAs, storage configuration, SATA configuration, IDE or AHCI, hard disk ray protect, IDE detect, also obviously RAID mode. Advanced CPU Configuration, 
CPU ratio, C1E support, hardware prefetcher, adjacent cache line prefetch, MPS and ACPI MADT ordering. You've got your choice of modern order, ordering or legacy ordering. Intel virtualization technology, CPU TM function, execute disabled bit, enabled or disabled. Intel hyperthreading technology. You can set active processor cores, A20M with speed step, C state technology as well. Obviously, chipset advanced Intel VTD configuration, virtualization technology for direct I.O. currently disabled, onboard devices. Gives you basically control over everything, including the Marvell SATA controller and USB 3 on and off. USB configuration, USB functions enabled, high speed mode enabled, obviously, for USB 2. BIOS handoff, legacy USB support is on auto. PCI plug and play. Turn on or off. LED control. LEDs for the board itself for warnings. Republic of Gamers configuration. And ROG Connect, which we have enabled to be able to plug into the motherboard and control any of our settings from a remote computer. Power settings, suspend mode, repost video on S3, ACPI 2.0 support, ACPI APIC support, EUP ready, APM configuration, power on by a few different devices, your hardware monitor, all your voltages, temperatures, as well as overheat protection. Fan speed monitor and your fan speed controllers. You have uh, separate fan speed controls for the CPU, chassis, and the optional fan one. Optional fan one typically used by uh, side fan in the case. Boot device priority, listed hard disk drives. There are actually a couple more hard drives in here, but we have them disabled for boot purposes. Boot settings, quick boot enabled, full screen logo, ROM display mode, boot up number lock, wait for F1 if error, and delete message display. Security, password, tools, Asus Easy Flash 2 for updating your BIOS, Asus Overclock Profiles allows you to save up to eight profiles of different overclocks or different uh, timings, voltages, etc., whatever you like, and load them at the touch of a button. Go button file uh, will allow you, you have a go button on the motherboard, one touch overclock, drive expert configuration, and finally the exit. Very flexible. BIOS, exactly what you'd expect from a Republic of Gamers board. Uh, the Extreme Tweaker is, of course, very extreme. It's an awful lot you can adjust there and get your motherboard running exactly as you would like it. Very nice job by Asus on the ROG3 uh, Rampage 3 Gene motherboard BIOS.